Hi everyone, I'm Steve Cook with Draper. I'm here working inside the Draper Pro Portal. Um, I'm going to be showing some features of the new updated Projection Planner 2.0. We made a lot of updates back in June of 2018 to the, to the tool, so if you haven't used it or haven't used it lately, you should uh, check it out and see some of the new features. Okay, once you're in the toolbox area, you're going to want to go into the projection planner. And the first section you'll see we first work with um, the seating information. This helps narrow down your choices when you're selecting a surface. So now if you look closely you'll see that we ask for um, off-axis viewing information and this is especially uh, um, important when selecting materials like ambient light rejecting materials. In this area we have a choice for selecting residential application or commercial application. So if you select the residential application, um, it'll change the section below as far as calculating a proper image size. Uh, for this example, I'm going to be staying in the commercial application because that's most of the area I work in and, and, and what we, we do. So in the next section, we're in the image information. We've added um, some additions to this area, which is support of the new AVIXA DISC standard, which is the, uh, the new image size standard. If you don't have much info on the AVIXA DISC standard, you should look it up and, and find out how it works. Otherwise, if you're working in the commercial marketplace, we've set uh, the default at 2.5%. And we recommend 1080p projectors or WUXGA projectors or projectors up, up to that resolution, either a 2% to 2.5% to, to of uh, element height. If you already know what size screen height that you want, then you can bypass that and just go down and, and select your aspect ratio. The default is 16 by 9, but we've got all of the updated aspect ratios that projectors support. The next section in the image uh, size area is the image height because when selecting a proper image size we're usually going by proper image height so that your font height in the commercial marketplace is supported. So when you're doing that you can work from any direction. You can select the image width, image height, or image diagonal and it'll calculate all the other information out and display it in this light blue box. The next shaded section is your ambient light information section. You need to enter what the lighting in the room is like at the screen because that affects your system contrast ratio. And you need to have an idea what the light, how many foot candles, and the calculator will know once you enter that how much projection system brightness is needed to overcome it. If you don't know what kind of light is in the room, there's a link here that says typical ambient light levels found in various room types. If you click on that link, it will bring up a chart that we created, giving an, an example of all your typical type of room lighting scenarios from theater to auditorium, controlled room, training rooms, conference rooms, and classrooms, all your typical applications, and then the typical amount of ambient light you'll find in those rooms. And you just want to use the highest number, and that's the best way you can guesstimate in your calculations of what your, your possible system brightness and system contrast levels should be that, that you're trying to target. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the default values. Those are pretty typical for a conference room or training room with the lights in in the audience turned on fully and maybe the front the frontmost lights turned off. The next shaded section is the projector information section. So you need to enter under projector lumens use the amount of lumens that the projector has specified preferably using the ANSI lumens. Um, we're actually calculating with 80% of that. And what we're doing is we're factoring in other variables like if you're using optional lenses, they're typically not as bright and fast as the standard zoom lens. The next box is the stated contrast ratio. That value you can enter, but it's not going to have any um, impact unless you're in a dark black box theater environment. So if you're in doing a high-end home theater, screening room or, or something like that, it would be worth entering that value in. It will have uh, an impact on the calculations, but again, only in those darkroom environments. 
The next box, we've added, again in the new version, um, applications for ultra short throw projectors. So if you select that, it's going to immediately start selecting materials down below in the chart that are best to be used with ultra short throw lenses or projectors. The other thing that helps with uh, hot spotting is the distance to the projector. These two boxes combined are to try to make sure that you get optimal brightness uniformity so you really should enter that value in. The next shaded area is for the type of application. So we entered this also in the new version. So we've added support for blending, rear projection, or acoustically transparent material. And then this last shaded area really is helpful because of what we've done is we've allowed you to check box different families. And if you're doing front projection and you tend to use our Tech Vision premium engineering uh, engineered surface family, um, you can just check box that and it'll only bring up those materials, which is real, real nice. It just uh, doesn't clutter up your screen as much. Once you've entered in all those values, you can come down and you can type um, the project name and details on that project. And then um, once you do that, it will create a PDF file afterwards that will allow you to run different scenarios and then save those PDF files for different projector brightnesses and different scenarios. Once you click Calculate, you'll see the screen start to refresh and it's loading data in, into our database and it will start to calculate and it's going to bring up the whole chart that you've, um, you've asked for for the different families and materials and what happens is whatever criteria have been met for a good choice of screen material will light up green. Any cell that lights up yellow is telling you that that is a problem area for each of those materials and that's why those materials are lit up uh, sort of a, a reddish orange tint. So any material that's lit up sort of a red orange is basically there's a problem going on and, and you want to look at each of those yellow cells because those are telling you where the problem exists. Another new feature that we added was the calculator can now back calculate for proper system brightness. So before this version you would have to keep entering higher and higher values of projector lumens to try to get that material to light up. So that's a huge um, update in itself to the calculator. So the tool has really grown and we've added a lot of nice new features. So it's really steering you a lot closer to selecting a proper surface. So that's the projection planner. A lot of new great updates and additions to help you narrow down a proper surface selection. And again, if you need any help, you can contact your rep and they can help you walk through the, the planner if you want to get more familiar with it. And again, if you're not registered for the Draper portal, you really want to get in touch with your rep and get the information you need to get onto our portal. Thanks for coming.